Welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, we are going to show you how to create a bottom-up assembly with Top Solid 7. We'll show you how easy it is to add parts to an assembly and how to apply and modify assembly mates. To get started, the first thing that we're going to do is create a new blank assembly file. In this first sample, we're going to create a bottom-up assembly, and we're going to do it based on the crankshaft pieces here. Now before I do that though, I'm going to go to my axes here in my entities manager and ask the software to show me the axes because I'm going to use those in my mating. So I'm going to start by bringing in my left side piece and then I'm going to bring in my right side piece just by drag and drop as well. Now as soon as I do you'll notice that I go into my positioning mode and the reason for this is because now we have more than one piece so the software assumes that we want to apply assembly mates. Now notice that this part is purple and this is blue. This tells you something very important. The blue means that the part is fully defined or fully constrained and the purple means that it's underdefined. The reason the blue is fully constrained is because automatically a fixed constraint was assigned to it. I know that by this balloon right here. Now the first thing I want to do is delete that because I want to actually apply my own mates to this. So to do that I'm just going to say I want to take that cylinder to that axis. And then maybe I want to take that planar face to that axis too. And you can see that as I'm applying these mates, these little balloons are being applied so that you know what has been applied where. From there, I'm going to bring this down a little bit, zoom up, and I'm going to grab that cylinder and apply it to this cylinder. Now the first thing that I'll note is that this is facing the wrong way. No problem, I just go to my balloon and double click on it, and it inverts. We'll drag that out, and now maybe here I'd like to go from that planar face to that planar face and then finally that axis to that axis. And now, if you look, I can spin this around and test it out. So like that, we've now made our first assembly. I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to close the positioning, and I'm going to go ahead and rename this assembly file as crank subassembly. And we'll even go ahead and save it. You can save it in the tree, you can save it in the tab, you can hit save up here, there's lots of different ways to save it. From there, I'm going to go ahead and create another little sub-assembly. So let's start by saying New Assembly. And in this case, I'm going to pull my conrod down. And next, what I'd like to do is I'd like to insert my bearings into this conrod. So I'm going to go into my standards, and this is a custom library that I had defined ahead of time. And there's two ways to insert the library components. One is I can just drag and drop the bearing family in. Here you can see the component and I can grab the component that I want. I want maybe the NAO22C. It could give the occurrence a special name if we want, but I don't care. So I want to take this face to this face, this face to this face. Now that's fully defined. I can exit out of that positioning. Now, there's another way to bring the component in, and that's simply expand the bearing family and grab the specific catalog code that you want. In this case, I want to grab the NAO 17 and just drop it in here. And like that, I fully defined that as well. Now, from here, let's say I grabbed the wrong one, or maybe I wanted to grab the bearing that didn't show the chamfers. I can just right-click on the component, go to Code, and now here's my codes here, or this little note that popped up, I can just double click on it and change the catalog code here. And like that I grabbed a version without the chamfers. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this one as well. And I'm going to call this Conrod Subassembly. And we'll go ahead and save that off as well. Now from here we're going to go ahead and build the main assembly. So to do that, I'm going to create one more assembly. And again, this is just showing you the power of bottom-up assemblies within Top Solid 7. So here, what I want to start with is grabbing my crank uh, sub-assembly, drop it in here. And again, I'm going to go turn my axes on. I'm going to edit this positioning. And we're going to start by getting rid of that constraint, and then we'll start applying the constraints we want. So here, I want axis on axis, and then maybe I want axis on plane. So if we look at this right now, you can see we can spin it again. But here I'd like to center this, just for fun. Now, 
I don't know how far the distance is from one piece to the other, so let's go measure that on the fly here. I'm going to go to Tools, I'm going to go to Measure. I'm going to zoom up and select that face there, and that face, and here we get a distance of 11 and a half millimeters. So I'm going to exit out of that, and now I just want to apply an offset to my axis on plane of 11 and a half divided by 2. And like that, now we're centered. And now I'm going to exit out of my positioning. Now, next, let's go back to our assembly. I'm going to include into the last positioning automatically my Conrad subassembly. And the reason I want to include it in there is because this way when I move this, it knows it can move this. So I want to take that cylinder to that cylinder. And again, I'm going to do an axis or a face on axis mate, so that face to maybe this axis. And now I need to know how thick that is so I can offset that. So let's go grab our measurement tool again. I want to measure that face there to that face there, and that's 12 millimeters. So now if we zoom out, we can say 12 divided by 2, which of course we know is 6, and oops, that went the wrong way, so let's just double click on it to invert it. So now we have our Conrad assembly in there. Let's finally add our piston assembly in as well. Now, with the piston, I want that to be on that axis, right? Now I'm just going to position this over to the side. Maybe we'll move that up a little bit. And now, let's go ahead, grab that cylinder to that cylinder. And like that, the piston head becomes fully defined because there's no more mates required. If I exit out of here and grab this, you can see that we can do our first level of testing for this assembly. And again, the whole goal here is to show you how easy it is to build bottom-up assemblies within Top Solid 7. Again, just to review, all of our constraints are dynamically applicable. If you want, we can go to the constraints and show them here. Just grab them out of our Entities Manager. This way you can quickly make adjustments to mates as needed. Go hide them and move on.